I just said thank you 50,000 times. Don't believe me? Why don't you play that back at point zero 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 one speed? Thank you truly though for 50k subs. It's pretty awesome. There's now enough of us to battle head on against the entire population of Atlantic City, New Jersey. They had that one coming. But if you guys want to win the war, we're gonna need to pump up those numbers. So be sure to subscribe to officially join the Gunner TV draft against the state of New Jersey. Content houses. The lucrative business model of the 21st century that promises aspiring teenage influencers fame success with just one trade-off. You uh, have to live in a giant fucking mansion and make TikToks. At least that's what it looks like on the surface. <laughs> silly spoiled children and your silly spoiled dreams. I'm a grown-up that has to worry about grown-up things, like setting up the Wi-Fi or complaining about gas prices. They're pretty, they're pretty high, aren't they? However, this shady business goes deeper than one might expect, with the same industry players causing problems time and time again for everyone involved, often ending in a house's ultimate demise. Today we're answering the question, why do all content houses fail? Or at least most of them, I wasn't gonna get your attention by titling the video, why do 98% of content houses fail? So, uh, back off. Just, uh, not off the video, keep, keep watching. In the world of social media, it's called a collab house. Residents say parties at this house behind me are a daily occurrence. It's about to be a f***ing movie. And what happened with the TikTok kids down the street? Hey, come, hey, come, hey, come, hey, come. A whole bunch of people inside the house. Can you make sure they all do NDAs? If there was a complaint about you, what would their complaint be? People would say, I'm an asshole. Basically are saying, take it until, you know, a tragedy happens, which is gonna happen here. That was pretty badass, huh? Little trailer action, I've never done that one before. I'm personally fired up, and me right now, I haven't even made the video yet. I hope Future Gunner delivers on that shit. Fucking try, man. The idea of content houses is nothing new. Just looked at Team 10, Hype House, Sway House, Clubhouse, Clubhouse Europe, Clubhouse for the Boys, why there's so, so many, many goddamn, goddamn clubhouses. clubhouses. But what do most of these collaborative houses have in common? Uh, they don't exist anymore, except for whatever Frankenstein combination of 15 year olds they try to insert to make the Hype House stay relevant, the rest have all but vanished. Hell, Clubhouse is just straight up a porn website now. While the concept seems to do a good job at launching people's solo online careers, it equally does a good job of burning to the ground whatever collective house brand name they've come up with. The Sway House unfortunately launched and still tries to sell Sway pre-workout products as if the house is still running. Boys, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think people are gonna buy from a brand that's based on you guys living together when you guys don't live together. Also, your fan base are little girls and you named your energy bar Sheesh, so maybe it was always doomed. I wanted to find out why exactly is it the case that these houses have an average lifespan of four months when every lease I've signed is at least a year. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the untold, now told story of the Drip Crib, a content house you probably never and ever wanted to hear about. I sat down with one of its original members, Tyler Pauly, an ex TikToker, because that's apparently a profession we can retire from now. And he was willing to talk about his experience in the house and the mismanagement that he witnessed firsthand living there. For the purposes of this video, I'll often be clipping in moments from this interview to give context to issues I'll be talking about. If you wanna watch a full interview, it'll be in my Patreon, link in bio for all member tiers. It's actually very interesting. We go way more in depth than we even do in this video and Tyler does a tell all, so go check it out. With that said, let's meet Tyler Pauly. Tyler, thank you for coming today. It's an honor to have you here. It doesn't look like it. Oh my God, how, who put that there? I, how did that, I'm so sorry. I don't see anyone else here. I definitely, it wasn't me. That's really embarrassing. I hope Not, we can get- Don't feel embarrassed, don't feel embarrassed. Over this hurdle? Yeah, yeah, we're good. We'll move forward. Quick little bump in the road. You were one of the founding members of the Drip Crib. One of the OGs, yeah. You had left before shit kind of hit the fan. Yeah, shit hit the fan pretty crazy and pretty badly from what I heard as I left in terms of, you know, the parties, the trash, the neighbors. I left before that, <laughs> way before that. <laughs> One thing that might seem immediately obvious, but is a huge cause for concern, is that most of the people living in these houses are either teenagers or in their young 20s. For most of them, this is the first time they're living without their parents in a frat house-like environment, minus the college schedule to keep them on track. There's no one telling kids like, yeah, there's like ground rules, but my household raised me differently from others' households. So it's like, it's a huge, equation for disaster because it's just a bunch of us young reckless kids living in a nice house doing all this cool shit you made it to la kid this is your moment it's time to shine 
Let's ruin the neighbor's day. Jeff and his wife live directly next door and say night and day they're dealing with large gatherings, loud pool parties, and non-permitted film shoots. Cars constantly speed up and down outside their home, and their nest cam captures the party spilling into the street, the partygoers drinking, getting intimate, and even defecating. The girl squats in the street and starts to pee. So that's always good. And I know what you're going to say. Oh, here goes Boomer Gunner again with his moral superiority complex, finger wagging these kids as if he's never partied before. And uh, uh I'm cool. I used to publicly defecate all the time. They used to call me the urinator back in high school. I would just start peeing everywhere, all over. They couldn't stop me. So I get it. A little social gathering here or there is no problem. But this is influencers we're talking about where a party isn't just a party. It's content. So let's do it as much as humanly possible. And then they had a party literally for nine consecutive nights that went from 1030 to literally 738 in the morning. Marsha Scully has lived on the street for 50 years and said now every morning she finds used condoms outside her house. OK, even my empathetic party self is feeling pretty bad for the neighbors at this point. Nine consecutive nights of partying, even people that went to both weekends of Coachella are wincing at that. But once again, you have to understand the culture of a content house is to get as many collaborative TikToks and videos as possible. So it only makes sense that the new house in the block would throw a ton of parties to get those bigger names to come out and give them that juicy juice Cloud. Oh my god, is that Ash and Ray at, at the drip crib? These guys seem like pretty legit. I should probably go check them out. The chaos that ensues when a whole house of young TikTokers sees their living space as solely an opportunity to get clout is the downfall of the house itself. They get lazy and entirely neglect everyone and everything else around them. Suddenly, the only important thing in life is social climbing and letting your place be an environment for that is the quickest route to the top. I want that fame. I need that fame now. Call JG Wentzworth, 877-FAME now. Everyone just kind of was like, all right, cool, we're here. Now it's Let's relax. When does the clout come? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're like, they're like, yeah, when, they're like, all right, when do I get famous now? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just like, how does this work? They're like, I can just sit here and I'll, I'll get famous. And with this laid back attitude, the house started to become a disaster of a mess. So the house was pretty messy, pretty dirty. We mm -hmm. had a lot of people in and out, a bunch of dudes living there. No one wanted to do the dishes. No one wanted to, you know, cook. So there was a lot of just trash bags, fast food bags, like a bunch of that shit piled up. There's so much trash, noise, and disturbance. There was no point and me doing what I was doing because nothing was going to change. Like everyone just still wanted to do what they wanted to do. At some point after Tyler moved out, the biggest scandal the Drip Crib had was a potential new member who was staying there for a week leaked videos of the built up trash, some black mold, and most infamously claimed to have gotten rat bites in her sleep while she was there. When I had stayed with her and the whole Drip Crib crew with my boyfriend at the time, I got bit by rats from their place and had to go home early to Seattle because I was gonna get rat bite fever. Of course, the house tried to deny these claims for PR sake, but it didn't help when one Drip Crib member uploaded a TikTok with a dead rat visible in the pool behind him. When we visited the house, one of the young men seen in the videos came out at one point and when asked about the parties, said there had been none and that quote, we're just kids. And I think that statement kind of says it all. They're just kids. They're really, really stupid. The industry of TikTok celebs are all young kids who have never lived on their own and don't really have any structure in their lives. They spent one summer dancing in front of their camera and now they get to skip college and partied up in LA with other teenagers that did the same. So why did we move into this house again? Is this a business or do we just throw house parties. If it's just parties, why did I have to sign a contract to legally be a part of Drip Crip? If it's a business, why is my house a huge fucking mess every day and neighbors are petitioning to evict me? Can I please speak to the manager? When talking about these houses, it's important to understand the structure behind them, and they usually have the following entities. You have the actual homeowner and the rental management company that represents them, and then you also have the influencers and the content house manager that represents them. For the Hype House, this is Thomas Petro. For the Clubhouse, this was Daisy Keach. And for the Drip Crib, this was a guy named Devian Young. The sole biggest thing that can bring down a content house is having the wrong person in this position. And oh boy, is Devian Young a case study on being a bad pick. For example, we know that PR is one of the most important jobs this role needs to handle well, especially with a collective of rowdy influencers. So let's see how Devion addressed and responded to those news stories about their neighborhood trying to get them evicted. The neighbor situation, we have a whole bunch of Karens and racist neighbors. They have threatened us with violence, which is on, uh, you know, online. The videos are out there. They threatened to kill us. They've made racist comments. They've verbally assaulted us and they've physically assaulted us. They've even sprayed water 
from a water hose at us. So you guys need to do your homework before you guys believe stuff that random people say on the internet. Right, okay, so interesting strategy here. Don't take accountability, instead flip it and blame the neighbors for being mad at you about the continuous parties and actually claim that they physically assaulted you. <laughs> you know how I can tell he's lying and his neighbors didn't actually assault him is that, remember, this is what they looked like. They're all over 70. If grandpa and grandma here were to attack you, you could end their life with a single karate chop. They even sprayed water at you from a hose? Oh, oh no, oh wow, oh that's so terribly violent. I wonder what that looked like. Sometimes they spray us with water. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> Oh, okay, so they hosed you down with the nozzle set to light sun shower drizzle mode. Not exactly the high pressure crowd control hose I was envisioning, but okay. But yeah, no, just call them racist and don't show any video proof, but say the videos are definitely out there somewhere online. You know, you can do the research, you can find it. Despite Jeff here seeming quite reasonable. And we're for them. We want them to get sponsors and make gazillions of dollars, but we're not for them doing it at everybody's expense. So who is Devian Young? What's his background? and how can we learn from him what a house manager shouldn't be? From what I can gather from his Instagram, he's a hybrid club promoter, music artist, wannabe fitness model, has an OnlyFans, and on top of all that is the owner of Drip Crib. Respect the Drip Crib and the CEO of it. And for someone managing a social media content house, he's not very good at social media. All of his pictures are blurry, he's got Snapchat filters on them, he's got this weird post from Thanksgiving where he's offering himself as a boyfriend for rent, the diamond package is only $1,500, will come for the whole night, wear an elite fit, and even kiss your forehead. If I had the money, I would have bought that. Think page. about the, the parents of the kids a part of this content house that may have seen his page. Yeah. They're probably like, yo, there's no way this is who's running this. Definitely like out of the ordinary. It's not your average social media like manager page look. And hey, albeit for me or Tyler to judge anyone who's not that adept at social media, but he's running a goddamn social media content house, so it's a little strange. Outside of that, from what Tyler tells me, Davion was a management nightmare for the house from the very beginning. You had mentioned before that the house was supposed to be ready at a certain date and it just oh, wasn't, right? Yeah, so we were, he was like, you need to be here by this date for the house. We drove, me and my best friend drove in a Honda Civic, like a two-door Honda Civic with a five by eight U-Haul behind us with both of our bedrooms packed into it. Across the the country last minute notice to make this happen to be there by this date we get there and he's like yeah the house isn't gonna be ready for like another month so he slaps us in studio city one bedroom one bath five of us in there. And then we all shared this bathroom for an entire month. It's never a great sign to be having major house issues before moving into your physical house, so this raised a bit of a red flag for Tyler. Why am I trusting this manager on anything going forward with this big of a screw up already? Well, Tyler would be 18 at the time, still really wanting to make this content house work, and had already paid his first month's rent and security deposit to Devion. Come to think of it, it was probably that last part that was more of a motivating factor to keep going. This is the contract we signed to be a part of Drip Crib. It, okay. And it basically stated like, you're gonna pay 2K a month to be a part of this house and that covers your rent. And within all of that, it's gonna cover PR services. It's gonna cover, you know, for brand deals. Like it was just supposed to be like an all-inclusive payment for us to grow as like, an influencer and we expect we're moving into a house and we each all have our own bedroom technically speaking there's three actual bedrooms in the house we get there to find out that we have to share bedrooms after the fact that we signed the contract after we get there after we gave him our first two grand everything yeah damn yeah we we're we we're big butt hurt hear that out loud again they all already spent two thousand dollars on the assumption that they were going to be getting their own rooms just to show up have devion take the master suite and put the rest of them in shared rooms and closets this is a good first example of how managers try to lock influencers into contracts with no promise of delivery. So part of that contract with you paying rent 2K a month is that he's going to bring you brand deals. Bring us brand deals, PR, all that crazy stuff. What was the delivery on the brand deals? Nothing, nada. I didn't make a dollar from him. My eight grand or so that I sent to him for rent, down the drain. I kind of cracked down on Devin and I had a conversation with him and I was like, yo, like if you can't, if you can't do a simple like task of bringing me a couple hundred dollars worth of a brand deal in this month, I was like, I'm not gonna be able to pay you rent for next month. And he, he literally looks at me, he, I, I contact, he's like, I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, 
<laughs> I was like, all right. So put yourself in Tyler's Gucci flip-flops for a second. You rushed out to LA just to share a studio apartment with five guys you just met, and now you're getting fucked over with expensive rent just to not have your own room and no brand deals to even pay for it. The contract said you'd be provided brand deals, but it didn't stipulate just how many Devion actually had to secure. However, I would have hoped that, that number would be higher than zero. To be fair to Devion, he did get the boys into a blue face NLE music video. You can see Tyler doing his little dancey dance back there. But this wasn't a paid deal and was the only thing that Tyler got out of his manager for the entire four months they worked together. The issue with Devion's house management comes down to this. The incentives for him as manager did not line up with the same incentives as those of the Drip Crib members. Sure, he'll get a cut of the brand deals he supplies them, but there's not too much incentive there for that. The house members are already covering rent for him to live in a mansion for free and he's got a club music promoting fitness only fans career to focus on how I assumed that his goal or like how I could like read that his goal was to utilize this for his music benefit also his promoting benefit Tyler firmly believes that Devion put the whole house together in the first place to have them help promote his music career and other endeavors and not so much caring about the brand deals which by the way is totally okay just don't make them all sign contracts promising to be anything more than a roommate that just happens to be responsible for collecting rent however the collecting rent part appeared to maybe actually be a lie as well no one really knows what happened to the rent, but the landlord ended up suing Devion and many of the other members after Tyler had moved out for not paying any rent past the first month. This was confirmed by Devion himself in a Business Insider article, which was no doubt bad press for the house. So you guys need to do your homework before you guys believe stuff that random people say on the internet. Maybe it's time we bring in someone more professional. Okay, so stay with me here. While Devion Young is a house manager, early on he realized he needed some help and brought in what's called a talent agent. Her name is Ariana Jacob and she owned a company called Influences. This company no longer exists. Did I get it? It was a fly, fuck. Oh, I did get it. Oh. Now, a talent agency is the head honcho. They basically manage the connections between the influencers and the brands they work with. Basically what Devion said he was going to do for the Drip Crib members. Typically, they work on an individual level with a client, but these content houses were an opportunity that simply couldn't be ignored. What if I could get all of these idiots signed underneath my agency collectively? This idea brought many new opportunistic faces to the table. Take Amir Ben Yohanan, for instance, the 48-year-old man who owned the media group behind the clubhouse, who's apparently only known pictures on the internet is this photo. The fuck? <laughs> To quote Amir, he thought of TikTok as kids messing around and looked down on it. But after moving to Los Angeles and seeing how obsessed his children were with the world, he decided he wanted to cash in on what he saw as a modern day gold rush. He would later have allegations made against him claiming he mistreated influencers as young as 15, screaming at them and making misogynistic comments. One member claimed in response to telling him that they felt overworked, he said, you guys are probably on your period, which is so bad. Imagine you send your 15 year old daughter out to LA to make it big and suddenly she's being yelled at by a 48 year old man named Amir Ben Yohanan, again only picture of him that exists on the internet for not making enough content. And actually her being upset is because she has a vagina. Look honey, we got a schedule to stay on top of okay? You're not overworked or overstressed, you're probably just on your menstrual cycle. But the content cycle stops for nobody, now make me some goddamn TikToks. I want to start a new internet trend called uh, the Amir Challenge, where if you unjustly upset a woman this week, I want you to look her into the eyes and say, did I really do something wrong, or is it just that time of the month again? And it should, I think, go over really well for you every time, I think. Now, while a talent agency is typically in the business of securing actors, musicians, and athletes, influencers have been the latest target client for them as of the last decade. Whereas for the other industries, these agencies have developed reputation, connections, and standardization of pay, that's not such the case with the creator economy. And when TikTokers were just starting to move to LA in 2020, a lot of these talent agents were looking to lock them into long-term contracts with unfair revenue shares for them. Luckily for Tyler, he realized that this was some bullshit. She had sent us this crazy contract that I had my lawyer look over and that he had his lawyers look over. And he was like, holy, he was like, this is, you're like signing your life away for like two years. It's like a locked in like thing. And I was like, yeah, I'm not touching that. She got like ownership to everything. Like my Venmo account, my like everything. Yeah, like hefty contract, a hefty contract. And I think she made it so big because she's like, 
yeah, these kids probably aren't going to read through it. Now, this is where we have to start to be a little careful because Ariana Jacob makes every one of her clients sign a non-disclosure agreement or an NDA when working with her. Even Tyler, though he didn't sign the individual talent contract he had just mentioned, did sign an NDA prohibiting discussing any business he has with Ari after the fact. And I want to make sure that we protect Tyler from any potential issues there. So everything we talk about going forward is alleged and from public record. I believe that covers our asses legally. Let's continue. So Ariana Jacob comes into the drip crib and basically gives this pitch. Sign this awful contract that makes you my property. Sign this awful NDA that says you can't tell anyone about it. And then maybe I'll give you some brand deals if I'm in a good mood. If Amir is watching, a good mood is when a woman isn't on her period. Ariana Jacob had the same setup with two other creator houses her agency formed being called The Girls in the Valley and The Kids Next Door. Both houses that failed within months, allegedly because Ariana did not supply enough brand deals for them to be able to cover rent. Sounds familiar. She would later blame the pandemic for this, even though brands were paying a ton of money during the pandemic, my guess is that since she was trying to sign as many influencers as possible, she started to neglect actually getting them brand deals that made them money. Whereas Devion Young was a case study on how incompetence of a manager can be the downfall of a house, Ariana Jacob is a case study on how maliciousness of a talent agent can cause the same turmoil. In this article by the New York Times, they take quotes from a bevy of different influencer clients Ari had worked with in the past, and taking a look at this, we can get a clearer picture of the kind of client agent relationship she had with many of these influencers. Brittany Broski, who went mega viral for her kombucha tasting TikTok, was approached by Ari, allegedly DMing her, have you made any money? I'll translate to malicious talent agency language. That means, how much of that shit can I take? Brittany ended up signing a contract with Ariana and nine months later realized that she wasn't getting paid from any of her brand deals. She would go on to say that Ari was withholding some $23,000 in fees and that she was even squatting on her domain, BrittanyBroski.com. How petty. From one of the housemates in the Girls in the Valley house that Ari put together, Ari would show up at all times of the night. She'd come as late as 1 a.m. and she'd be texting us until 3 a.m. and show back up at 10 a.m. She'd bring guests without her telling us. There was also apparently a security camera put in the kitchen that they did not consent to, connected to Ariana's phone. When the house ended, the girls did this to the walls on their way out, which I think speaks volume to the attitude they had towards her at the time. And then even Devion Young's relationship with her was tainted pretty quick. He said she manipulates you. It's a nightmare, alleging that she had also leaked nude images of him to business partners. Now, Ariana Jacob blames this article for the fall of her business and losing all 85 of her clients. She denies damn near every claim made in the article, going as far as to sue the New York Times for $6.2 million in an ongoing lawsuit. I'll read a quick excerpt from the complaint filed by Ari's legal team. Given her success, innovation, and impeccable timing, it is not at all surprising that some might envy Miss Jacob for her success and innovation. Yes, given her innovation, it makes sense some might be jealous of her innovation, which is probably the most narcissistic Hollywood take I've ever seen in a legal argument. Your Honor, people are only upset at me because I'm a visionary. And they're probably all in the periods anyway. Amir chimed in. Ariana Jacobs' Instagram bio now reads, kindness and empathy are number one. Cancer culture sucks? Rise above it. Ariana, you lost all 85 of your clients. Do you think maybe the problem might be internal? That no one stuck with you or spoke up against this article's publication? But no, just ignore that. Maybe Tucker Carlson can help you win that fight against those liberal cucks at the New York Times while you figure that one out. So why do all content houses fail? Well, it simply comes down to poor picks of management at the house and agency level. Look, I contemplated putting a big section together with my prescriptions on the different content house models and how a manager could optimally put a house together, making it profitable for all members and minimizing all tensions. But what am I, a fucking nerd? For a good breakdown on that aspect, go check out Colin and Samir on YouTube. They have a video covering it in a much better way than I ever could. For any aspiring influencers, how many times have I said that fucking word in this video? Here's Tyler's advice on if you're looking to join a startup house. If you get the opportunity, personally, this opportunity put me in a position to where I'm at now that I'm like very grateful for. So like, you know, don't be afraid to take the risk, but at the same time, know what you're getting yourself into, know who you're working with realistically. Well, Tyler, it was great to have you. Thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Um, I do have one more thing for you. Uh, I need you to sign this NDA. It's just your standard NDA. What? There's nothing, nothing uh, crazy? Just, you know, that we uh, can use your image and likeness, that you can never talk shit about me legally. Okay. That a man named Esteban from Mexico City can also legally snap your kneecaps if you say my name even once. Sign right there. Yep. Great. 
That's perfect. Do you need any other signatures? No, we'll just photocopy it. It looks like a pretty hefty NDA. I mean, I don't really have time to look through their shit anyways. No, yeah, of course. Influencers don't. Huge shout out to Tyler Pauly for helping out with this video. He took a risk sharing his experience that he didn't have to. So please go show him some support at Tyler Pauly on Instagram. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Once again, for the full, much longer interview with Tyler, it'll be posted to my Patreon for all member tiers to watch. At the time of this video's release, if it's not up now, it will be very shortly. Subscribe and follow me at Gunner Klein on Instagram to apply to join my content house called The Gunner House. And no, I'm not open to changing the name. Don't move too slow. Fine line between love